If you're not familiar with the Cloudways, they are a managed cloud hosting platform. And if you saw my recent video on three steps that I took to drastically improve a website's page speed, well, you'll know that switching to Cloudways was one of them. So if you've been using that cheap shared hosting and you're ready for something better, you're looking for a more permanent solution so you don't have to keep switching hosting, well, this is it. Here I'm going to show you exactly how I use Cloudways, how I set up Cloudways because you do have to set up a server, which don't worry, I'm not super technical when it comes to servers and you don't have to be at all, but I'm going to walk you through exactly how you do this so you can get better results, a better performing, faster website as well. Now, what I recommend that you do is you use the free trial link down below, and that way you can follow along. You can set up your website as you go. Now, the reason that you want to do this is because you're going to be able to test your website to see how much better it is going to perform on Cloudways without ever touching your live website. It is not going to impact it at all. We're simply going to set up your website on Cloudways, and for free, you're going to be able to test out how much better your site performs. And then if you decide to switch because it is performing a lot better, well, then all you have to do is push it live. Otherwise, well, there's nothing that you're going to need to do. But that's why it's definitely a good idea to test this out to make sure that this works for you. And following along is the easiest way for you to do this very quickly. So let's jump right into the first step. Let's start with the free accounts. So we can test out the results here. So we're gonna click on this start free button and then we can either complete this form here or we can just log in with one of our accounts. Set the password and we'll answer the questions here real quick. Looking for website speed. You can say what your spend currently is. If you have a promo code, you can click here to put that in. Agree to the terms of service and we will continue on. Now that we are in, we need to set our application and server details here. So under WordPress, we need to select the version that we want. We can select version 5.9, which is the latest version right now, a multi-site or clean without Cloudways optimization version. So we're gonna go ahead and add 5.9. We're gonna name our managed app and our server here, and we can also set up a project if we want. So if you have different clients or you want to create different projects, you're going to be able to set those up and keep those separate here. Now below that, you're going to see a number of tabs. And so this is the server that you want to choose here. You have DigitalOcean, you can see you can do Volter, AWS from Amazon. There's some different options here. So I would recommend going with DigitalOcean or Volter. I personally am using DigitalOcean. Next, we can select our server size. And so this is going to depend on the size of your site, but you can always make this smaller. You can increase the size here as you grow, which is the beautiful part. In order to grow, you don't need to switch hosting accounts. You can simply increase your server size as you go. So this package will really meet you where you are now, and then you can continue to grow into it. So I am using the two gigabyte server size and then next we want to set our server location. So this is going to be the closest location to where you believe most of your visitors are going to be coming from, which is what I use here. And so I am going to select New York, which is the East Coast option in the US. So now we can go ahead and launch this server. And as you can see, the server is being added. This can take a couple of minutes. So we will just pause for a moment until that server is set up. Now that our server is set up, Let's take a look at how to migrate a website. So you have your live website, you want to test out Cloudways, you want to see what kind of results that you get without touching that live site. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to head over to our applications. We're going to go to the application we have set up. And then we're going to come down here on the left-hand side to migration tools. Now, Cloudways will migrate your website for free, and it takes them probably a few days just to get to it in the queue, but you do have to have an upgraded account. So you do have to start paying for the account in order for them to do that free transfer for you. But here's how you can do it yourself for free. So with this migration tool, this is a WordPress tool for your website. So what you're going to want to do is download this WordPress migration tool right here, and then we're going to head over to your website and install that there. Coming back over to our website, we can upload the plugin file and we'll install that. Activate the plugin. And now that the plugin has been installed and activated, we can go to its settings. 
We can put in our account email address here and click migrate. Now what you're going to need to do is fill out this migration form and then this is going to start the migration for you. So this is saying migrate your site to Cloudways. We want to put in the destination site URL, the SFTP host and server address, database name, and all this information. Now, don't worry, all of this is very easily accessible in your Cloudways account. To find all of this, we're gonna go back over to Cloudways and go to our application. And here we're gonna find all of our information. So for the destination URL, that is this temporary URL that you see right here. Now it is asking for the SFTP host server address, and that is gonna be this IP address that is appearing right here. And then for our database name, that is going to be this. And then it's asking for an SFTP username. You can create one right here. So simply type in a username, type in a password and click add. And there you go. Now you're going to have the SFTP username and password that you need for that form. I've now added all of this information into the form here. For HTTP auth enabled, we have no if the site is not password protected. If you have a password on, then you probably just want to take it off for now, or you can just select yes here. And if there are any root directories that you want to make sure that you're migrating over and the site is not password protected on the front end there, it is not. So we're going to go now. So we can now click migrate and the migration begins. Now that your migration is complete, you've tested the results, you're happy with them, you're ready to push the site live, there are a few steps that you need to take. The first is you need to update your DNS settings. So this is where you're gonna connect your domain to your new hosting account here at Cloudways. So you need to go back to wherever your domain is registered, whether this is Namecheap or GoDaddy or many of the options that are out there, and you need to update the DNS records. If you are not familiar with this, this is something that you can hire someone to do. It literally will take them a couple of minutes to log into your account, change the settings, and be done. It is quick and easy, but if you are not familiar with this and you want to do it yourself, I'll also link to some instructions below so that you can walk through this easily as well. Now, once you've changed those settings, you do want to come back over and you want to do a few things on Cloudways, which I'm going to show you here in a few minutes where to find all of these settings and everything. So we're going to look at HTTPS. You can use a free Let's Encrypt certificate to have an SSL certificate for your website, which you can do at a click of a button here in the dashboard as we're going to take a look at. You'll also want to make sure anytime that you transfer your site and you're using a new host, you need to set up your email again as well. And we'll look at where you can do that if you want to set up your email here with Cloudways as well. And lastly, this is optional. You can choose to use a CDN. So this is something that after you have gone through setting up your site on Cloudways. And if you've watched the video that I have on the three things that I did to improve drastically my site's loading time, Cloudways is one of them. But there was a couple of other options. One that I did not mention there because the site was already running really fast without it was using a CDN, a content delivery network. So if you're still not get, quite getting the performance, you've gone through those few steps that I've given you there, a CDN is your next step. And that's really can, can be the last thing that you need possibly. But let's go ahead and take a look at our account. So you're familiar here with all of the settings and what you now can control. Let's take a look at our server a little more closely here. So we can see here that this is telling us that we have five applications that are set up on this server, which we'll take a look at here. I've set up several applications here. This is one project that has been associated with this server. So again, if you want to add new projects, you want to separate out clients or different types of work that you have, you can completely optional. And this is going to tell you how many members are actually allowed on this server. Right now, I haven't added anybody. And then we have some additional options here where we can restart our server if we need to. We can add another application, which we can also do on the next screen. And we can transfer our entire server or even clone it. But I want to get into this particular server that we have set up. 
So when we click in, it's going to take us to our master credentials here. This is something you may need if you want to log into SFTP, you want to access all of your files. And you're also going to be able to monitor your server. So this is what I like because you're able to see here if you actually need to increase your server size. Let's say that your traffic is starting to grow. You're really excited. More people are coming to your site. Your rankings are going up. But is your server going to be able to handle that? So if you can look here and see that you're all in the green, you know you're doing good. But if all of these are starting to fill up, then this is something that you need to take a look at. You can also look at the details here. So this is going to show you the free CPU that you have available. The higher the number, the less busy the server is, the lower the number, the more busy your server is. But as this is saying, if you're consistently seeing below 10 to 20% here, then at that point, that's when you want to bump up your server size. So a lot of shared hosting makes this confusing. You're not sure what your numbers are here. So this is really helpful to see this visual here and see the summary. Now you can also manage services like PHP, for instance, here your settings and packages. This is where you can come in if you want to and you can change the PHP version, MySQL. So this is stuff that's more technical. You may never get into this. You also have some security options and under vertical scaling, this is as your website grows, you can go ahead and increase or decrease your server size. You also have backups here and you can have these run. You can say when you want it to back up, how often you want it to back up and for how long they are going to retain those files here. So this is really nice to have that taken care of for you. And if you want to enable SMTP, then you can do that here. So this is essentially just going to help you set up that outgoing email delivery. It's going to make sure that your emails are actually ending up in the inbox and not in another folder or in spam. This is a paid service, but it is really, really cheap, like 10 cents a month and going from there. So that is something that we'll look at here in a moment. If we head back over to servers here, we're back where we started and we can go over to applications. This button here is going to take us to the live site. This is going to show us the number of members that are on this particular application. So if you want to add any members to this particular application, you can do that. And then you can delete this. Or what I'd love to do is to be able to clone this application, which is essentially you're creating a staging environment. So if you want to update your website, you want to run any tests or anything like that, you want to install a new theme and set up the site, what you can do is you can create a staging site. So your live site stays live. Will you work on a version of that site in the background? Once you're happy with that version, then all you need to do is push it live. This is really, really, really helpful. And you'll be surprised how often you actually end up using something like that. So let's go ahead and go right into our application here. Now we can see that we have all of our access details here. Now, this is one that we talked about here with the staging environment. So if we want to create that staging environment, we are simply replicating the application that we already have, where we saw on our application page that we are creating that staging environment. And from here, this is where we're going to be able to come in and we're going to be able to pull all of the data. So we can select the staging environment that we have. So we have set one up here and once on this application, we have updated, let's say the theme, we've done a redesign, we've tested out some new plugins, whatever we've wanted to do. And now we can pull those changes from that stage environment to the live site. So they are now live. So that makes it really, really, really easy to be able to do, even if you don't have any experience. In the same way that we can pull, we can also push going from the live application and pushing any changes there to a staging application. If for some reason you were doing it the other way there. Now, if you want to monitor your application, you want to see the analytics for it, such as traffic, or you want to look at your PHP and disk usage, so on, you can do all of that here. Under bot protection, it is making sure that no bots are accessing your site and it's showing here what traffic and login attempts that they are not allowing into your website, which is helpful to be able to see. Under domain management, this is where you will be able to add any additional domains should you need to. 
A SSL certificate is something that you're also going to want to set up. Now you can just use Let's Encrypt, which is free, which is what will work for most sites. But if for any reason you have a custom one, you've purchased one off site, then you can select that here so that you'll be able to set that up for your domain. Now under backup and restore, if you ever need to actually restore your website from a backup, let's say the site has been hacked, God forbid, we don't want to have that happen, but should that happen, this is where you can come. You can select the latest version of your backup. So we have daily backups here that are running and we can simply restore that application here now. And likewise, if for some reason you're like, I need a backup right now, I don't want to wait till the next scheduled time, then you can do that here. Now, most of the other settings here are a bit technical. So if you are technical, you understand all this jargon, you want to get into all of this, then you can certainly go through these settings. Otherwise, these aren't really things that you need to worry about until sometime maybe you are told that you need to take a look at those. We've really gone through the biggest points here in Cloudways. Let's also take a look at some of the add-ons that are going to be available to you. Up here in the top navigation bar, we can click right here and select add-ons. Here we already have support enabled, of course, we can get support. We have some email options here. So for instance, we have Rackspace email. And if you want to have email, unlike shared hosting where some of the packages already come with email, you will need to purchase that separately. So this is where you can enable this right here. And for $1 per month, you can have one email address, but you can also set up a catch all email. So if you wanna have other email addresses, and send it all to that main email address, you can do that right here. Now we also have elastic email. This is also what we talked about for SMTP. If we want to make sure that our transactional emails are ending up in the right place in the inboxes for only a thousand emails that are sent per month, it's only going to cost us 10 cents. So that's something very inexpensive to be able to enable. And then we can also make sure that our application migration is enabled. So if we want the Cloudways team to be able to migrate a site of ours, which they'll actually do that for free once you are a paid customer. So if you don't want to have to go through the migration process, they'll do that for you once you upgrade. And again, you can enable the application upgrade if you want to request that that is upgraded for you as well. And you can enable Cloudflare on your account if you are using them for your CDN as well. Thank you so much for sticking with me through this as we've gone through how to actually migrate your site over to Cloudways, how to set up the server and applications, and take a look at the settings that you now have control over within your Cloudways accounts. Should you still have any questions at all, make sure to check the support links that I have down in the description below. And you can always ask questions down in the comments below. And of course there, please do let me know the results that you see once you test this out for yourself. I'm looking forward to see how much faster your site loads with Cloudways. As always, thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.